You are watching a video of myself making a painting of myself making a video of myself painting. <laughs> Bruh. I've always been tickled in the brain by those quirky self-portraits where artists paint themselves painting, so I wanted to do my own version, but contemporize it. Being an artist in the age of social media comes with a unique set of hurdles. Part of the impetus for making this painting was the fact that I hate recording myself while I paint. Silly, right? I say this as you watch a recording I chose to make of myself painting. Whipping out your phone to document yourself takes you out of the zone. It disrupts the flow. It's an intrusion on a safe space. And just knowing you're going to be recording yourself imbues the whole creative process with a sense of anxiety, of constant alert, like you're being surveilled by yourself. It's some panopticon shit for real. There's something so sad about packaging process into presentation. Process is supposed to be private, messy, meditative, experimental, deeply personal. But now it's not just the finished product you're showing to the world, it's the whole rocky journey. You have to make the making look pretty. You have to put on a show. And that's fucking stressful. And yet, I still do it. I do it because I want to share my art with the world. I want to make things that are meaningful to other people. But for that to happen, other people actually have to see what I make. And the easiest way for that to occur? Say it with me. Social media. But because these platforms are mediated by rich, rich tech companies that want to get even more rich, rich, the only way to expand your reach is to bow down to the algorithm, which means following trends, posting constantly, creating a persona, commodifying yourself. It's a silly little dilemma. As artists, what we create and how we create are profoundly shaped by the digital landscape. When validation and financial success depend on clicks and views and likes, there's so much pressure to disregard what truly feels authentic to you and instead contort and constrain your subject matter and message and style in a way that appeases your audience. The result is homogenization. The art that goes viral ends up all kind of looking the same. Social media discourages risk-taking and experimentation. It neglects forms of art that aren't easily captured by the mediums of photo or 30-second vertical videos. And it makes it so hard to just create for yourself. Once you start sharing your art on social media, it feels like if you make something and you don't post it, then it doesn't count. Literally, Pixar didn't happen. It's so easy to lose sight of why you're making art in the first place. As a member of Generation Z, I grew up on the internet. I've been sharing my art on Instagram since I was 10. In fifth grade, my friend had been encouraging me to join her on the platform, so eventually I caved to the peer pressure and downloaded the app on my sky blue iPhone 5C. My original username was at potato draw, and I shared very important things such as Bruh. drawings of potatoes. <laughs> The drawings hidden in the pages of my sketchbooks were now little squares in a digital grid. Private creations, now in public view. Like reading your diary out loud through a megaphone. 
in putting myself on display to the world. I let the world come in. I've been making art with other people's expectations in mind for half my life. And I think I lost something there. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Yay. Thanks, Skillshare. Traditional jobs are not one size fits all. I certainly was not built for a corporate nine to five. She built different. Creative careers can be daunting because there's no prescribed path to follow like there is for being a doctor or a lawyer. That's where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creative and curious people. You might know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing, and illustration, but Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes like build a creative career, productivity and time management, and marketing your brand or business with video. Finding your why or understanding the underlying motivations that drive you was a central theme in the class, Mindful Growth, Learn a Transformational Approach to a Fulfilling Creative Life. I really resonated with the message of this class and learned how implementing a mindfulness practice can sustain a meaningful career and combat burnout culture. This is something I hope to carry with me as I continue to navigate trying to make a living from my art. So if you want to join Skillshare, which you should, the first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare. I've been thinking about the implicit dichotomy between artist and content creator, a social media era manifestation of the age old highbrow versus lowbrow tension. Highbrow implies refinement, taste, intellectualism. Lowbrow is the realm of mass appeal, unsophistication, cheap thrills. Obviously, the line between them is blurred and tenuous and ever-changing. In the 19th century, Shakespeare was considered lowly pop culture, widely advertised to the masses like Marvel movies today. But I think the highbrow-lowbrow distinction continues to persist because its premise is exclusivity. It validates the cultural superiority of the elite. I'm no historian, but it seems to me that humans do be liking their superiority complexes. Anyway, I feel like there's a widely accepted notion that content creators are not artists. The implication is in the name. Artists create art. Content creators create content bite-sized pieces of entertainment that pander to trends and algorithms, reducible in meaning to emojis and hashtags. I feel like this prestige gap is mirrored in how influencer is understood to be inferior to celebrity. Like, remember how it was a whole scandal that TikTokers got invited to the Met Gala? The establishment was threatened by the prospect that clout attained through social media could carry the same cultural cachet as traditional fame. Addison Ray on my red carpet? Literally number one injustice in society. As I've been learning more about the art world, like the bougie fine art art world, I've come to realize how much it functions on connections and gatekeeping and ingratiating with the elite. That shit icky is gross. But I'm weirdly still drawn to it. Like if I let myself be unrealistically aspirational, I would love to have my work show in galleries and museums one day. As much as I know these institutions are steeped in impressive structures of capitalism and exclusion, part of me still yearns for their stamp of approval. The art world has its own enigmatic set of rules. They say, 
If you want to be taken seriously as a fine artist, you shouldn't market your art, or sell prints, or make merch, or sell your art directly to people instead of through a gallery, or share personal details about your life, or use social media for anything other than networking. In other words, the things that pay the bills for most people trying to make a living off their creative work is somehow delegitimizing in the realm of high art. And not just pay the bills. These are the things that make art actually accessible to everyday people. I gotta admit, without TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, there is no way I would have reached the number of people I have. High schoolers from South Africa to Portugal to Uganda have done school projects on my art. I've gotten messages from teenagers to grandmas saying I inspired them or made them feel less alone. I've sold paintings to people in Switzerland, Australia, Indonesia, Germany. That's crazy! I barely ever leave my room, dead ass. But social media has carried me around the world. Does the fact that I make work primarily for a social media audience mean that I'll never make it in the capital A art world? Am I delegitimizing myself as a fine artist by posting on Instagram reels? Maybe. But I guess, so be it. I want a world where art is democratized, where it can reach and inspire normal people, instead of being siloed away as intellectual exercises for the upper echelon. I don't think artist and content creator have to be mutually exclusive. You can be both. At least I hope so. Because I am gonna try.